Ich kann mal schauen, wo. Jeden Tag. Maybe welcome to Craftwork. <laughs> I'm going to give the intro when I know for sure that I'm on. I think it's happening. I don't know if it's happening. Hello, welcome to Craftwork. If, uh, if you're seeing me now, and you were waiting to see us. I'm sorry about the delay. We uh, had every single device break at the same time for some reason. We must be in some sort of vortex here. Um, but I think we made it. If you can, uh, oh, yay, okay. We, we made it. We're on, we did it. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's had that experience before of like right at the moment when everything's about to start, everything breaks down. That's literally what just happened. Um, but here we are for our final episode of Craftwork. Um, it's nice to see some of you here. Um, as always, if you're crafting along, you can send in a picture to highlyviolet at gmail.com and we will post it if we can. Um, tonight seems like, I think it's, I think we're going to be good now. I'm going to top this non-wood surface. Um, I think we're going to be good. We only have one camera. We usually have like a double cam situation, but as I said, everything broke. We usually use like this old phone for the wide cam and then a webcam for the, the zoomed in camera. And, um, like five minutes before, like at 7.55, the phone like got all fuzzy and then the computer stopped working and then the internet went out. Um, so I don't know. But anyway... Um, we're going to have a good time with our single cam, and um, what I'm doing tonight is, oh, Amber says she's so sad it's the last week. I know. Um, I feel both ways about it. I am, have been having such a good time doing craft work. This has been such a nice thing for me to do on Tuesday nights, and it's been really nice to be able to connect with a bunch of you. Um, it's nice, like, all my good friends and family are coming and crafting along, and some people that I don't know, too, have sh stopped in, and that's been cool. Um, but it's also exciting because uh, the reason we're going to stop doing craft work is because we're going to start figuring out our um, podcast, which is really, like, the thing that we wanted to do um, in our bigger project of 2020 Total Clarity. And, uh, yeah, it seems like, I don't know, it's been a, a good six weeks of this, figuring out the live stream, sort of getting comfortable to some degree. Um, and, yeah, time to shift gears a little bit. But, um, but that being said, if anyone still wants to do some sort of, like, virtual crafting um, photo exchange or, like, messaging, I'm always happy to hear from you guys. Um, even if it's not about crafting, you can still, you can still send me stuff and I'll, we'll be in, we'll still be in touch. Um, and hopefully we'll find some other way to connect during this time. Um, but yeah, anyway, so tonight we're going to do, um, some ink blot tests. I thought would be fun. Um, so I think probably most people know about like the Rorschach test. Um, Herman Rorschach was the was a scientist and artist that developed these inkblot tests. And he I did a bunch of research about him the last couple of days in preparation for this. Um, he is a Swiss guy and he was born in 1884. And um, his nickname as a child was Clicks which is German for blobs. If there's anyone that speaks, I mean, Amber was in German class with me. If anyone knows whether I pronounced that right or not, I don't, just let, you can let me know. I did my best. Um, but yeah, so it was, it's a German word for blobs. And it's because like, even as a kid, he was really into making these ink blot drawings. Um, and then when he became a scientist and got older and was working with people, 
in like a psychiatric um, way, he realized that showing the ink blots to people, um, that there were like things that people typically saw and then other things that, that other people typically saw and that it actually had some sort of like correlation to um, emotions and like mental uh, disabilities and different things like that. And they could use the ink blot test to sort of like see what people were predisposed to and then figure out a treatment. Um, so I thought that was really interesting and I spent a bunch of time like reading what different shapes and like what if you see different things kind of what that might mean. Um, there's a lot of controversy around the ink blot tests as well and definitely it's like one of these things you take with a grain of salt. I find it really interesting in the same way that I find like reading coffee grounds and tea leaves and like tarot and things like that. Um, it's like maybe it makes you think a little bit, but it can also just be fun. Um, and so I, so tonight I'm going to make my own ink blot test. And then I'm hoping that um, you all will let me know what you see in it. And I'll give you like a little fortune reading. Um, <laughs> I'm obviously not a pro, but I'm going to pretend to be like a, a fortune teller psychiatrist <laughs> tonight. Um, just based on my like little bit of information that I read about the Rorschach tests over the last couple of days. Um, I'm going to keep it light, don't worry. But, um, but yeah, so I guess I'm going to start by doing some. I have a bunch of like paints and um, I have watercolor paints and gouache and I have some UV reactive paints and then just like some acrylics. I'm just going to start um, playing around with it. But as I go, like if people maybe want to give like color suggestions, I'm open to that too. Um, but then really like I want to know what we're seeing in the blots. Um, you like where this is going? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I don't know how it's, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to start. So in the, there's like, this is, this paint is empty or dried out or something. <laughs> the first one. Um, in the Rorschach tests, the like official ones, there's actually 10 that were developed specifically by him for use. Um, and so actually he developed those in 1921, but then he died in 1922. So he never got a chance to like sort of make them, per like to perfect them over time. So the very first group of 10 that he developed are still the same ones that are used. Um, but yeah, so his have like a single color, which is black, and then for five of them, and then two that are black and red, and then three that are all colorful. So I think I'm not gonna use black, but I'm gonna do a single color. This one, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just like putting random blobs I've pre-cut my paper and pre-folded it, so um, I just put some random blobs. I feel like maybe throughout the course of tonight, I'll figure out like a way to make them pretty too. That would be nice. Like, I can make some, like try and be intentional about it. I brought this roller. I might have used too much paint. I see it squeaking out the edges. Oh yeah, that one's covered. What do you see? <laughs> This one's just covered. Um, I can't see my camera, so I don't know where. Oh yeah, there it is, okay. So that's number one. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there so you can kind of still see it. Nina says, hi, Mike. Yeah, because she just saw me. Oh, did you just? trying to fix this camera. Yeah, Mike is trying <laughs> his first appearance on the final episode. <laughs> Things are going to get crazy. Um, yeah, he's going to try and figure out the second camera while we're, while we're going. So the image is 
I don't know, it might get weird. I went, I went a little heavy handed with that. Um, and I didn't bring any paper towels in here with me, so I was trying to use this scrap piece of paper. Okay. I'm gonna show this one again. I can't currently see the comments, but I will check back when I can. Um, here's number one. Think, you can also think about it for a little bit. Um, part of the like official test is that participants have, you know, a few minutes at a time with each ink blot to think about what they see. So you can like you can think about it, and then um, whenever anyone wants to let me know what they see in that first ink blot, I'll I'll let you know what that means. And while you're thinking about it, I'm gonna make a second one. I guess this time I'm gonna use less ink. Oh, this is Scott and Brandon's favorite night, too. That's nice. Hey, guys. Oh, I'm glad you guys are all watching. You know, they're playing the games. Oh! <laughs> they're not watching. They're playing their own video games. Well, you can tell them I said hi. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to use a little bit of ink on this one, or paint, and see if it works better. Not that that didn't work, that's pretty cool. So, oh, so number two, I went a little lighter on the paint. So this is number two. Um, okay, so Nina said she, oh, you're seeing a white dot in the evening light. Wow. Okay, so the fact that you're seeing a bat is interesting. Um, if you're seeing other animals, that's good. That's good. That's a good thing. That means that you have some sort of like empathy for other creatures. And then the fact that it's in a white light is very positive. This is a, this is a good thing that you're seeing, Nina. And then um, Amber saw some snowboarding goggles, and we're like we're talking about number one here. Um, yes, I, I think I can see that. Um, what I'd say about that, and Amber, this is because I know you, I think that you might be feeling um, you're reflecting back on times when you were having a great time out in the world, living your best life on the mountain, uh, getting that fresh powder. So maybe you're feeling nostalgic for those times um, and, and knowing that, that those times will be back. What else do we have here? Oh, so Alexa sees a beetle head. So that would be similar to the bat in a way. Um, seeing an animal is always good. It means you're in touch with nature. And um, and maybe it's something that is in the air right now, too. I feel like, I don't know if this is true, but I feel like the beetles come out in spring. And so you're probably very aware of what's going on in the world around you right now. If anyone else wants to chime in with what they're seeing, um, since I now have multiple prints, let me know which one you're talking about. Um, so the dark blue one was number one, and then this is number two, lavender. I see Sean is saying this is a great topic. Thank you. I came up with it myself. I mean, Mr. Rorschach came up with it, but <laughs> I decided to do it tonight. Um, okay, so number three, we're gonna do another single color.
even less paint on this one and see what we get. If any of you want to do something like this at home too, you can see how easy it is. I'm just using some junk that I had around the house. Um, just like some extra paints and you don't need this roll. This actually, this is definitely not what this is for. This is like a um, block printing roller. But anything that'll just like press the ink from one side to another will work. You could use like a spoon or a book or whatever. Um, and then paper and that's all you need. Okay, let's see. Oh, wow. All right, so number three. Okay, so there's some more um, sites about the number two coming in. I'm gonna hold that up again while we talk about it. So there's lavender panda smooching. Oh, that's cute. I think that's probably when it's held this way. I should try and remember which way I'm holding them because that'll make a difference. Um, so lavender panda smooching. Oh, so the fact that you called out a color um, means that you are in touch with your emotions and your creative side. Um, there's a strong connection between our emotions and color. And I can't remember off the top of my head what the lavender color sort of makes you feel. But um, but it is, it's an interesting thing in these tests whether you're sort of noticing the color right away or if it's more about the shape. Um, and also, as I'm giving like these, these uh, explanations to people, um, I hope it doesn't influence what you're seeing in the next ones because there's no right or wrong answer here. And um, yeah, it's kind of just like, you can see, you can just, you can just still tell me whatever it is that you're really seeing and, and not be influenced by whatever I'm saying. Um, but yeah, so the fact that they're pandas kissing then is, so you're seeing like two animals sharing a positive moment. And, um, and that would mean that you're, you're looking forward to some positive moments in your life and you're probably able to take in all of the positive things that are happening around you. Maybe that's just for this moment right now. Maybe that's been all day. Maybe it's longer. And maybe it's even going to be this coming week. Um, what else do we have? So number two, two children talking or kissing. Oh, so another kissing or talking. Um, so that's similar. Yeah, so that's very positive. Um, I mean, I could... I could do a deeper dive into this and think that maybe we're all yearning for some sort of like kissing and talking with other people right now. Um, so that might have something to do with it, but it's also, it may, I think it means that um, you're feeling pretty relaxed right now. You're seeing a positive image here. So this is great. I didn't notice if anyone else said anything, but I'm gonna hold up number three now. Oh, you're watching with your five-year-old? Yeah, awesome. Um, he can definitely, this is a five-year-old could definitely do this. It's going to have a great time. Okay, I think I kind of am getting the hang of this. I'm going to do a two-color one now. Oh, so number three is a crab. Yeah, I can, three is kind of a tricky one, isn't it? Because it's like so spread out. Um, I see the crab. This, this animal 
choice again like it connects you to nature it connects you to the other beings that are around you um the crab is an animal that has a nice hard exterior that's keeping it safe so the fact that you're seeing a crab might mean that you're sort of um, feeling sheltered right now, feeling safe. You're making your home a place that you really want to be in and you're feeling comfortable there. I think I saw someone new on there. I didn't see who it was, but oh yeah, there's Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Um, and anyone else that might be joining us now, um, I'm making ink blots tonight. I have done a little bit of research over the last couple of days about um, Herman Rorschach, who is the guy that invented the Rorschach test. Um, it's an ink blot personality quiz, and or it's not actually really a personality quiz. Um, excuse me for that, and that is untrue. Um, what it is is a psychiatric evaluation. Um, and it's sort of, it's a thing that was used a while ago. It's sort of, um, fallen out of fashion at this point, but it's still sometimes used just to give an idea of like maybe what someone's emotions are at the time, um, and a way to unlock some deeper feelings. And so I did a bunch of research on like what different things mean and, that by no means makes me a professional, but I decided to make my own ink blot test tonight, and then um, people can guess what they think, or see. tell me what they see in it. It's not a guess. There's no right answer. Um, but you can tell me what you see in it, and then I will tell you what that means about how you're feeling right now. Um, so this is the fourth one. And for any of you that missed it, I'm just going to run through them again. There's, um, this is number one. So if you'd like a reading, just uh, let me know what you're seeing in them. So that was number one. This one's number two. And this is number three. And then I'm about to open up number four, which is our first two color piece. I don't know which way to hold it. I'm gonna hold it like this. So this is number four. Um, I'll hold it here for a little bit so you all can take a peek. Um, and I see Brittany has get, has uh, entered number one is a toolbox. Okay, so I think um, I'll hold up number one too so that we all have a refresher. So if you're seeing a toolbox, what I think that might say is that you're... Um, at the moment, trying to gather up all the different things that you need in life to succeed. So you're trying to put them all in one place uh, so that you have access to them in the future. And I think that's a great, I think that's a great thing to be doing. Um, I'm sure you're succeeding at it. And then I think there was another thought on this one. Okay, so a button-up Western shirt. Ooh, so. The fact that it's an item of clothing means that you're, let's see, it might be similar to the crab where you're sort of covering yourself, you're making yourself feel safe, um, keeping yourself warm. It's a Western shirt, so you're um, connecting with a group of people that are maybe on the other side of the country and an idea that... Um, either you identify with or not. And, uh, but you're connecting with an identity in the Western shirt and, and it's keeping you safe. Wow, they're really coming in. Okay, so. <laughs> Ooh. 
Um, am I getting it right? Am I, am I guess, am I like, um, does, am I being a good psychic? Um, okay, so there were things about number four. I think Amber said parked cars. Did I see that? Oh, there they are. Um, yeah, parked cars. Okay. Okay, yeah, I see that now. Um, so parked cars, that's an interesting one. I think that has to do, so those cars are not moving. So they're, um, they're staying in place. They're resting. <laughs> but I also think of park, when I think of parked cars, and maybe this is because I live in Brooklyn, um, I think of like a crowded, it's like crowded on the side of this, on like the side of the street. Um, so it's like, it's like a big group of non-moving objects. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's, maybe you're, maybe you're feeling like, like you're, like you're kind of stuck in one place, but, um, it's a time to like recharge and like let the, let the car and which is you in this, uh, metaphor, um, <laughs> Just kind of recharge. It's a time to recharge if you're seeing parked cars. Maybe you're feeling like, um, <sighs> whoops. <laughs> um, okay, so then what else do we see? Okay, so number four, Sophie also saw two cars and two vans. Um, they're not necessarily parked, though. Oh, and also two lentils. Oh, interesting. Okay, so they're not parked. They're probably on their way to get groceries. Um those cars that you're seeing, Sophie, are stocking up and, um, you know, getting some, getting some beans, giving you some protein, and um, just like a nice base. The, this, what you're seeing means that you are, you're feeling like you have a sturdy base and, um, and a way to get it. <laughs> what else are we seeing? <laughs> okay, so, um, okay, Safino says, the th number three, oh, the three color one looks like the earth. Okay, yeah, I can see that. So you're taking a really um, wide view on this. And that's interesting. That means that you're sort of like thinking about a lot more than just yourself right now. You're thinking about like maybe how everyone is doing or maybe you're thinking about like the solar system or um just something like outside of yourself and um and that's interesting nice it's a nice time to be doing that we also see um pretty clouds over two houses oh yeah it really is amazing how much you can see in these ink blots um so what does that mean? So pretty clouds over two houses means that, um, well, it's home, you know, like home is a safe place. And um, the fact that they're pretty clouds means that you have a positive outlook on your home at the moment. Sophie says, I'm very connected to the Midwest right now. And I guess Tennessee as well is at the West. Mm. Is it the West? Eh, it's West of here. Um, uh, definitely feeling connected to the people who are West of me. Ah, so, I, so we were right. <laughs> Thanks for the confirmation. Um, okay, if there's any more, uh, if anyone else wants me to read your ink blot of, of the, the previous ones, just write in, and I'll let you know what that means about you. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to make another, uh, I'm going to make a two-color one now. Um, Sapino is very impressed. Oh, good. Thank you.
Neither this one is going to be a three color after all. Oh, and it looks like we have both cameras working now. Or at least I see the one, I see my close up here. So this is good. Good job, Mike. Oh, I'm glad it's entertaining. That's the goal. What are we going to get? All right, so this will be number five. Oh, oops, there it is. So that's number five. And um, for any of, oh, now we're back here. For any of you who um, might be joining me just now, I'm gonna do a refresher of what we've got. I might like repeat this a couple more times, um, but I'll try and do it faster. So this is number four, if you missed it. This is number three. What I'm doing is I'm making my own inkblot emotional personality quiz. And um, if you'd like me to read your emotional personality based on what you're seeing in the ink blots, you can just write into the comments and I'll let you know what it means about you. So this one was number two, and this one is number one. Um, okay, so I think we have some write-ins um, about number five, um, Robotnik. Is that, a, I feel like that might be a character that I don't know. Uh, Robotnik? I'm asking Mike, but also Alexa. <laughs> Is that a character I don't know? I don't know the character, so I don't know how to give you insight into what that means about you. Um, I'm gonna move on, but I'll come back. I'll come back to you. I think Mike might find me a picture. Um, but then I saw it, there were two more under that. Um, I'll give, I'll give some insight to the, to the next things and I'll come back to you, Alexa. Um, okay. So there's five guy, five guy with mustache, maybe Mike. <laughs> um, that's nice. That's like reminding me of the, um, marbling portraits that we did. It kind of looks like that. Um, so what does that mean about you that you're seeing a guy with a mustache and thinking maybe it's Mike? I think that probably means that you, um, that you love your family and your friends and you're thinking about people that you know personally and you're feeling connected to us. So that's good. Um, Sophie sees a blue eyed man with a red mustache leaning against a tree. Ah, yes. Um, so that's not quite a, that's not a specific person, but you are seeing all the details of a person. You're seeing the blue eyes, you're seeing the red mustache. He's outside, he's enjoying nature. Um, it's spring and that's a thing that I think a lot of us want to be doing right now. So maybe you're, you're just thinking about how nice it is to be outside and, if a blue-eyed guy with a red mustache is leaning against a tree, then um, he's probably feeling pretty relaxed. So maybe you're also feeling relaxed and you're channeling that energy. Is that Robotnik? What is he from though? <laughs> he's cute. Sonic Villain. I wish I knew, I wish I knew uh, these cultural references better. Um, well, okay, but he's a villain. So now I know he's a villain. Um, I guess 
Okay, until I know more, what I could say about this... Oh, am I going to learn more? It looks like I might be learning more. Oh, Sonic the video game. Oh, okay. So he's... Um, I thought you meant, like, Sonic, like... Um, like sound, like he was the villain of sound or something. <laughs> um, okay, so the so the video game Sonic, um, it did look a lot like him. I didn't. I never had video games growing up, and I feel like Sonic was like from our youth. Um, but okay, so the okay, so this is good. Now I have context. So I think because that was the first thing you saw, um, it does look quite like him, and. Um, this might be bringing, this might be uh, that you're feeling a little nostalgic as well. I think you're thinking about a video game that I'm assuming you played probably when you were younger. Maybe you guys play it now too. I know um, you have access to the video games. Um, but the fact that it's the villain means that maybe you're feeling like a little, like there's something chasing you. Maybe you're a little on edge. Um, I think the positive spin to that is that it is a, in a fun video game where there's lots of lights and good music. And, um, and I think Sonic usually, like, he gets, he gets out of the way of trouble. So maybe you're feeling a little on edge right now, but, like, you're going to be fine. It's not going to be too bad. And um, it's going to be, like, it's more fun. It's more, you, you, can, you can feel like it's a little bit of a cartoon. Um, so there's that. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else guessed. Oh, there is that him? There he is. <laughs> He's also very cute. He doesn't seem too much like a villain. Maybe Robotnik is leaning against a tree. <laughs> um, I mean, if it's that, then I think we could probably mash up what I said earlier for you, Sophie, and then what I just gave Alexa. Um, that's interesting, though, if this villain who's usually chasing people is sort of feeling relaxed and leaning against a tree. That's good news. That means he's just, you know, don't worry about him. He's just over there. He's doing his thing. Um, okay. I'm going to move on to number six, but I'm running out of room on my table here. I need to move these over. I'm going to make one out of black light paint. We don't have a black light set up in here, but we'll take a picture later. Maybe it'll look like one thing in regular light and one thing in black light. I was going to call it white light, but it's more like yellow light. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you like the reading. It's fun to do. I, um, maybe some of you know this. I know I've said it a couple of times. When I was waitressing when I was in college, I, le I was working at a Greek place, and I learned from the owner's mother how to read, how to read, you know, read. Oh, I'm doing air quotes, but you, I'm on the other view, so you can see that. Um, but I learned how to, like, you know, pretend to read coffee grounds from the Greek coffee, and I would do that for my customers. And it's so fun. I feel like it, you know. It's just connect, it's connecting dots. So these are the black light paint. I'm just going to use the really bright ones. Oh, maybe I should use the white, too, because then, ooh, that'll be fun. That won't show up here, but then we can take a picture later ooh, when it's under black light, and it'll, um, it'll, like, that, that one will, that part will glow. Oh, Amber is saying, tell me more about the coffee grounds. Um, yeah, so it's like the Greek coffee, which is, it's like Greek and Turkish coffee are both like really thick coffees. Um, and they're served in these little espresso cups. 
and um, you drink it. And, like, when you're done drinking it, there's always, like, a thick layer of coffee at the bottom. And then the thing that um, we would have people do is that you flip your coffee cup upside down, and that thick layer of coffee, like, travels down the sides. And then you can read, like, depending on how the coffee travels down the edges of the cup, um, it will tell you, like, it's kind of like getting your palm read. It, like, it's, like, following lines and seeing the directions that they're going. And then it'll tell you, like, about your life and your future. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's, like, the, and there's some symbols that are common that you want to look for when you're doing stuff like that. Um, and, yeah. I'm happy to, I'll be happy to read your coffee grounds next time I see you, Amber, or anyone. I got too much orange paint on here, so I'm scooping it off. I don't, I think this is, yeah, this is fine. These are my own, I was going to say, I don't know if that's cheating, but like, what's cheating here? This is my own thing. <laughs> okay. Roll it out. Ooh. All right. So this is number six. Right, so that's number, oh, here we go, big screen. So this is number six, and these are the black light paints. So this is the one we'll have to take a picture of later, and maybe it'll look different under black light. Um, if anyone needs a reading on this, let me know. I hold it for a couple seconds so that you can really take it in and think about it. And then I'll do another one. Where did I put it? Oh yeah, if I put it there, you can still see it too. This one is number six. Hmm. Nina says some kind of hen from below with beak. Oh, oh yes. Okay, so what that says about you, Nina, um, the fact that you're seeing an animal, again, this, uh, this has come up a couple times, but that means that you're pretty connected to other living things. Um, you are, you have empathy and you're connected with the world around you. Um, the fact that it's a hen, I think is interesting because hens tend to sort of, um, you know, they hang out with each, with other hens. Typically, they're like in a bunch. <laughs> um, and what are many hens called? Many chickens. There must be a term for it. It's not a bunch. A cluck. I don't know. Whatever it's called. There's a, usually a lot of hens together. So um, they're pretty social. So I think this, you might be feeling like, you're interested in using your social side right now. And um, and hens also tend to sort of stay still and nurture something for a while. They sit on their eggs until they hatch, right? Um, and they sort of like, they let it take its time until something beautiful comes of it. So I think you're sort of like, Maybe what that means is that you're nurturing your, um, your social uh, toolkit and you're like, you're letting, you're being patient with it. And um, when, it when it comes time, it's going to hatch and it's going to be beautiful. Um, oh, wow. We have a lot of 
write-ins here. Okay, so Brittany sees Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob. Oh, we have a picture. I didn't even notice you put up a picture of a chicken. That was smart. Um, I might want to read for that. <laughs> so we see, I, I actually do know who Mr. Krabs is from SpongeBob. I can picture that. Um, I don't know much about his personality, though. Um, I can just picture it because I know I've, I, I, I can picture it, whatever. Um, I think, so this is, in, because this is all, this is kind of like the nostalgic cartoon. Um, it's very fun. It's very silly. Um, maybe you're like sort of feeling like you want to bring out that fun, silly side of yourself and you're thinking back to, the things you enjoyed when you were younger, um, and trying to bring more of that into your life right now. Oh, there he is. <laughs> um, if, I, if I remember correctly, I feel like he was always kind of like upset about things, but it was like absurd. So maybe that's part of it too. Maybe, um, maybe you're, when you are upset about things, because you're seeing Mr. Krabs in this ink blot test, maybe that means that you have the ability to sort of feel silly and playful with yourself to help yourself get through um, some stressful times. Um, okay, so a round person in a cowboy hat. <laughs> um, so the fact that you're seeing a person is this uh, connection. You're feeling connected to other people. And um, the cowboy hat is a distinguishing feature. You're, hmm, you're feeling connected to other people and you're maybe feeling like, hmm, like maybe every like you're you're feeling like people are really wearing their true hats like in the sense of you know everybody has a different thing that they do and um for this ink blot it happens to be the cowboy hat but um you can sort of think about what your own hat might be and maybe you're thinking about like how that relates to your interactions with other people um Okay, and then the next one is a woman in a yellow dress. Oh, that was a long one. I, my, the comments went away. Oops. Okay. <laughs> I want to read the whole thing. Um, a woman in a yellow dress and a red hat dancing with buckets of peaches or maybe presenting her buckets of peaches to be sold. Whoa, that one's so detailed. Um, so the fact that you really went into all the details means that at this very moment, you are feeling very creative that... Um, part of your brain that gets inspired is turned on and um, you're noticing all the little details. There's like lots of stuff firing in there right now. Um, the fact that this woman is dancing with peaches um, really or presenting her buckets of peaches to be sold, those are both very positive things. Um, so that means that you're, you're feeling hopeful, you're you have a, a positive outlook on life generally. And, um, and peaches are nourishing. And um, I don't believe that they're in season right now, but I think they're coming soon. So I think you're probably looking forward to the fruits of the summer and feeling nourished. Is this the woman dancing with peaches? <laughs> um... These are all, this is all very interesting what everyone's seeing. I'm going to make, make the next ink blot, but, um, you know, feel free to write in with any other, any other thoughts and I'll interpret them for you. I'm trying to keep these in order so I don't forget which is which. Okay. Hmm. I think I'll do another single, I'm going to go back to a single color, 
to see how that goes. What does this say about me that I'm being indecisive with which color to use? Oh, hi, Kyle. Um, okay, so before I make this other one, I'm going to, I'll let you know what this means about you. Um, two friends about to share lemon cake with raspberry topping. Oh, that's very nice. Okay, so this is probably similar to the peach dancing. Um, the fact that you're seeing two friends, not just two people, but two friends, um, means that you're feeling connected right now. You're feeling connected with other people. Um, you're feeling, and the fact that they're going to share something, you're feeling like very connected with the people that you're close with and, um, maybe have a yearning to get together with people. You are sharing food, you're sharing, uh, maybe at the moment you're not sharing food, but you might be sharing ideas, you might be sharing love um, with the people that you're close with. And um, the lemon cake with raspberry topping is like, that's super positive, really sweet. You have like really great outlook on life right now. Um, the fact that you're seeing like this really sweet treat there's some, there's some good feelings firing around in your brain. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Um, and I don't know, since you just wrote in, I don't know if you're just joining us. Um, and maybe there's some other people that are new here. So I'll take this moment to just go back through the ink blots that we already have. Um, if anyone wants a reading um, from me about what you're seeing and what that means about you, just let me know the number and then what it is. Um, so this was number five. This is number four. Oh, I got it right, 100%, nice. I did my research. This is number three. This one was number two. And number one. And I'm about to make number seven, um, which I'm going to go back to doing a single color thing here. Oh, nice. Um, so one of the things that we've done before, this is our first one of the evening, but we have people send in pictures of things that they're working on from home. And this is a nice bowl of oranges that is coming along really nicely. We've seen it a couple weeks now, and it looks like there's some new highlights on there. It's looking great. And some M&Ms. <laughs> Someone's working. Oh, is this a, this is Amber? Nice. I thought maybe it was the same. I thought my mom had sent both. Um, that's a good craft. Peanut M&M's. Delicious. My favorite. <laughs> it is. It's my favorite type of M&M. Um, so yeah, if anyone else is crafting or wants to share what they're up to right now, um, if you send it to HileyViolet at gmail.com, Mike, who is running tech, We'll post a picture to post, we'll, we'll uh, post the picture that you send so that everyone can see. Um, okay, so this is number seven, ink plot number seven that I'm making. Let's see what it is. There it is, number seven. 
number seven. Um, how do I send a photo? So send it to, um, are you going to type it in? Mike's going to type it in. The email that's coming at you shortly. So this is number seven. If anyone wants to let me know what you're seeing here. And um, I'll let you know what that means about you. Here's a straight on shot. For me, it's like, I guess I don't know, if, I don't want to influence anyone, but um, it's kind of like wild to go. I understand now why the, the like real test starts in just black and then goes to a two color and then goes to a three color because it's kind of like weird to go from these multicolor blots to then just a single color. Um, so Kellen thinks it's a wise koala bear who speaks. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so you're seeing a koala bear, which is an animal, which um, means that you're feeling connected to the earth and the other living creatures that are on this earth. Um, you feel a lot of empathy. Uh, the fact that you see it as being a wise koala, um, that's a good, that's a good gift, Mike. <laughs> um, the fact that you see it being a wise koala means that you have a lot of faith in the creatures that are around you. Um, you think that they are maybe more knowledgeable than we give them credit for. And then um, the, also he speaks. So that falls into that too. He has, you know, this is one rare koala that actually has a lot to say and has the ability to say it. So I'm curious what he's going to say to us. Um, but that's what that says about you, Kellen. <laughs> um, okay, so then there was also a teddy bear, um, which is, um, what does that mean? So that's like a teddy bear is playful and nostalgic and soft and cuddly and safe. Um, and yeah, so, so I think it's like, you're feeling all of those things. You're feeling like you have a, a space around you that's filled with like fun, cuddly, <laughs> this is the teddy bear, um, fun, cuddly, safe space where you can feel nostalgic and um, feel a little bit playful. And then, oh, we have a Sophia Klapishak here. Hi. Um, and you are saying that it is a belly flopping teddy bear. Oh my gosh, that is also so cute. And I'd say all those that um, information that he is or he or she, I don't know, that the teddy bear is um, belly flopping is interesting um, because the belly flop is sort of like, I mean, it's very playful. It's very fun. It's something that you do in the summer when it's warm and you're sort of feeling free, but it's also like, it can be painful and it's like a, it's like a daredevil thing. So maybe it, within this like fun, nostalgia, playfulness, you're also feeling a little bit of like, um, like tricksy, like you're feeling a little like, like you want to be like a little bit of a like playful daredevil too. Um, yeah, that's cool. So that was, that was card number seven. Um, if anyone wants to, if anyone else wants to give a, give what they see, I will tell you what that means. Um, 
I don't know who just got here and who didn't, but I, maybe I'll, I'm just going to run through them all one more time just in case. Because I, Sophia, it's the first time I'm seeing you, and if you haven't seen them already, I'll just go quick for everyone else. But um, what I'm doing is I'm making my own ink blot test, and um, I'm encouraging people to let me know what you see in it, and then I will let you know what that means about you and your current emotional state. Um, my qualifications for being able to do this are that I have a bunch of paint in the house, I have some paper, I wanted to do this, and I read a bunch about uh, the Rorschach tests and how those are examined. And so um, I'm using a little bit of that information and then, um, you know, just some common sense. Uh, this is number four. I guess I wasn't counting, but number four. This one's number five. This one was number six. And then I think everyone probably saw number seven. There we are again, just in case. Um, and we see number one is a life jacket. Um, okay, so here's number one again. Um, you're seeing this as a life jacket, which is something that, you know, you keep on handy just in case you fall in the water and can't swim. Um, so... That's pretty, that's pretty good. That means that there is, you're like aware that there's a danger out there and you are, do it, you're doing your best to keep things on hand that would protect you from that danger. And, um, and the life jacket, the life jacket will work. Um, so you can feel comforted in that. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to number eight. I see some, I can't see that what that little symbol is that Sophia sent. But there's a, some kind of cool little symbol there. <laughs> it might be its own ink blot. Um, oh, so Brandon has it, has something to say too. Um, the last one, was it, I guess it was number seven, or was it number six? I think it was number seven, the last one. Um, Brandon sees two, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, okay, I see it now. Um, Brandon sees two UFOs encountering three UFOs. <laughs> yeah, um, wow, okay, so what does that mean? Um, these UFOs, if you don't know, are unidentified flying objects. So the fact that they're unidentified, that's interesting, right? You don't know what they are. There's a lot of unknowns out there. Um, and that might be on your mind. They're also flying objects. And things that fly are kind of like out of our control to some degree. They're just like whipping around. Um, you never know, like, where they're going to go next, when they're going to show up, when they're going to stay hidden. Um, so there's a little bit of, like, maybe concern there or just, like, awareness of the unknown. And then the fact that they are encountering each other um, is interesting because that's that means that you're thinking about um, communication, you're thinking about things and maybe people coming together. And um, you didn't say, you didn't specify whether this was like a good encounter or a bad encounter, um, which is, which is fine. Um, that means that you're, you're really just thinking about maybe like, what, what does it mean to uh, get together and, and have sort of the unknowns meeting at a time. Um, 
I would even go a little further and say that I can see that like the two UFOs are bigger and the three at the top are together. So it doesn't seem outnumbered or outweighed. Um, so yeah, I think it's just thinking about the unknowns and, and uh, how that relates to coming together. So now I'm going to make number eight, and um, I can see the I can see the comments right now. So if anyone else wants to write in about anything, feel free. I'm going to decide which color. I'm going to do a two color. I don't think I did a two color yet. Which two colors is the question? Right, let's see what happens. So this is now um, number eight in our test. So I'll put this here for a minute or so and let you all see it. Take it in when you're ready, if you're ready, if you're up for another reading. Let me know what you're seeing, and I'll let you know what that means about you. So that one was number eight. I'm going to sort of start while I'm waiting for you to um, give me information to tell you about you. Um, I'm going to figure out what my next one is going to be, what colors I'll use. So I'm just going to go ahead and make number nine. I'll just keep it two color. Okay, let's see. Uh, 
Um, okay, so this is number nine. Put it in here. And I will leave it there for people to think about. I'll get back to it. I'll show it again for longer. But um, starting to have some things come in for number eight. So let me let, let, me let you know what that means. Um, oh, we're over here. So this is number eight again, refresher. Um, and the answer is cute cartoon animal, maybe a dog face, I guess what that said. Um, yeah, so I think you're seeing, you're seeing cute cartoon animal, you're seeing a dog. So the fact that you're seeing a dog is, um, well, dogs are really loyal, right? Dogs are not just any old animal. They're like man's best friend. They're always like there to, um, they're always feeling excited to see you. Um, and um, especially if it's like a cute cartoon dog, um, they're even more excited. They're like, like regular dogs are excited to see you, but then cute cartoon dogs are like so fun, so happy. Um, so yeah, maybe you're maybe you're feeling like just like generally excited. Um, to be like around the people that you love and you're feeling loyal and um, and kind of playful. Um, and then, oh wow, a swimmer pressing their face against a glass window with goggles on. Okay, so that is, that's one that's very specific. And we've had a couple um, sightings in here that have been very specific, um, which is interesting. So when when you notice like a lot of different details, it means that there's like some part of your brain that's firing a little extra. Um, and I, that could be from something that you're seeing on here. It could be the colors. It could be the shape that's just sort of like hitting you in that particular way. Um, or it could be some other stimulus from earlier in the day. Um, so that's like a general reading on just seeing the details, but then particularly a swimmer pressing their face against a glass window. So a swimmer is a, an athlete, someone that's strong, someone that is exercising and using their body. Um, so you're probably feeling like maybe more in touch with your ability to exercise and move around right now. Um, and they're pressing their face against a glass window. So, hmm, so that could be, that could be a couple things. So the glass window is always very like cool and sort of like refreshing. Um, there's something about that that is really nice and refreshing. But when you're pressing your face up against a window, you're like either intentionally or unintentionally creating this like morph of your body. So it's interesting that you're seeing um, an athlete who sort of has control over their body doing something that is changing drastically the way that they look. Um, so yeah, so I think that's all like control over the body. Um, and then what are we seeing? Blue's Clues upside down. So that would be like similar to um, the cartoon dog. So I think I'd say the same thing about that. I mean, that's basically Blue's Clues is a cartoon dog. <laughs> so it's the um, feeling playful, feeling loyal, um, feeling like excited for fun and maybe a little bit like childlike um, in a good way. Um, yeah. And then, okay, so what else do we have? We have um, we have underwater, like at an aquarium. And describing oh, the swimmer. <laughs> yeah, that okay, that makes sense. So it's more to do with the swimmer. So um, oh right, because they all came in at the same time. I get confused when I'm reading these comments sometimes. Um, 
I don't know if that gives us any more, like, does that give us any more information? I mean, the fact that they're still underwater, yeah, I think that still has to do with, like, control of the body, because that's even more, like, they're underwater while they're doing it, so they're holding their breath. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, so then we also see a beautiful butterfly surrounded by little moths. Um, oh, I think that might be the next one. Sophie, is that the, um, is that this one that you're seeing? The beautiful butterfly surrounded by little moths in? This one would be, um, number nine, because I started doing that one, and then I switched back. Um, I think it probably is, because that's, I, I see that more in this one than the other one. If you're seeing it in the other one, that's, that's fine, too. It's what you see, right? Um, but I think I can give you a reading on that either way. Um, the fact that you're seeing flying insects, um, they're free. They're all over the place. They, um, they have like these interesting, so butterflies in particular, well, butterflies and moths, I guess, um, they cocoon, right? They like take time to sort of like nestle in and wrap themselves up and, um, take in nutrients and grow and then they emerge and they're free and they fly all over the place and um, they land on plants and they have like a great life but it's like quick and they just like live it to the fullest. Um, so I think you're probably feeling inspired to do the same and um, yeah the fact that it's like this beautiful butterfly in the center is what you're saying that's really positive and um means that you appreciate uh, the visual aspects of life. Um, and then it's surrounded by little moths, which is like butterflies and moths are not the same thing. So it's interesting that they're within the same camp, but um, I don't know how much they, oft they often interact. So you might be feeling hopeful that like um, things that are similar but quite different might start to find ways to live together and interact and um, appreciate each other. Um, yeah, so that's number nine. And that's your answer, Sophie. Um, I'm going to show all of them again, just in a row. Um, and I'll remember to actually say what number they are. So if anyone wants a reading, if you missed it from an earlier one, um, just write it in. I'll give it to you. Um, or if you just want to see what they look like, that's fine. Great, too. Um, so this one was number nine. Oh, you like that? Great. <laughs> um, this one's number eight. This one was number seven. I think this was six. So it's still kind of drippy. Um, this one's also the black light paint. Here we have number five. Four, three, number two, and number one. Um, and I'm going to make number 10 now. And so um, in the official Rorschach test, there are only 10, but I might make a few extra just because I'm enjoying this. And we usually stay here till 10, and I think it's only like 9.30, so I might make a few extra. 
Um, okay, so for this one, I'm, I'm going to do four. Oh, no. I'm, no, I'm not going to do four colors yet. Maybe for the extra ones, I'll do four colors. Um, I like to kind of have like a bounding box. Um, I'll just do two colors here. Part's fun. I like rolling it. And um, okay, so Amber said lily pads and birds for maybe I'll well no, I'll open it just because I think this paint dries very quickly. I'm gonna open number 10 and then I'm gonna go back to number nine uh, to talk about lily pads and birds. So here's number 10. And I'll leave that, oh, I'll show it here. So this is number 10. Take it in. Right. And then I'm gonna go back to number nine, but if you have anything, if you have anything to say, um, I guess let me know if you're talking about nine or 10, just so I don't give you the wrong reading. Um, so here, Number seeing lily pads and birds. Um, that's nice. So I'm, I feel like um, I'm not sure if you're necessarily seeing birds that like would land on a lily pad. Um, if you are, then that might be, if that's the kind of bird it is, then maybe it's like thinking about um, creating like spaces to stand on and like thinking about needing structure and um, like a safe spot for all creatures. Um, but either way, whether whether they're interacting or not, lily pads and birds um, together in a pond is usually where you'd find them. That's a pretty like peaceful, serene environment. Um, you're connected to uh, the environment, you're connected to nature, and um, they're also both things that float, which is kind of interesting thinking about like um, like the act of floating and moving up and going against gravity in a way, um, like defying what you might think your limitations are um, and like general upward movement is um, what I'm sensing for you based on that, that lily pads and birds that you're seeing. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show number 10 again you didn't get a chance to see it. That bottom part is kind of, that color is kind of hard to see, it turns out, but oh yeah, if I move it a little closer, it's better. Leave it here for a minute. Um, maybe put it on the other camera. Okay, so that's number 10. So 
you can still see it there. And I'll make, I'm gonna make like two more. Um, and yeah, just write in if you want me to a reading on any of them. I only prepped 10 pieces of paper, so I'm gonna have to prep. While I'm doing this and um, waiting for people to write in if they want to, um, I'll just let you all know if you, I know some of you heard me earlier and I'm sorry to be bringing it up again, but this is our last craft work. Um, it's been so fun and really nice to have some repeat guests and um, get to craft together and do just like fun, um, creative activities together, but um, it was never really our intention to be doing a crafting live stream. It just kind of happened, and um, yeah, it would. It happened because of you know being in quarantine time and um, wanting to connect with you all. Um, also, wanting a space to sort of test out all our equipment and figure that out. Um, and since I am a professional crafter and um, we've got all this stuff around, it seemed like the natural thing to do. It's been very, very fun. Um, I will miss it, but I'm glad that we've had it. And what we'll be moving on to do instead is that we're going to start to figure out our podcast. Um, so we're hoping that, you know, things will continue to progress um, in a positive way. And then maybe we'll be able to start walking sometime in the future. Um, maybe we'll actually start to be able to look at a date to start um, as opposed to just this ambiguous future idea. Um, and to prep for that, we're going to start figuring out our podcast, figure out how that's going to work whenever we um, can actually do it the way we plan. Um, we're still going to be doing the 360 videos, which um, are really fun if anyone's had a chance to check those out. They're also on our YouTube page. Um, we've been going to like local neighborhood spots um, and we have this 360 camera. So we've been walking around local areas and filming in 360 degrees. And then um, while we're doing that, we have a conversation with each other, either sharing some history about the neighborhood or um, you know discussing our our own ideas about um, a particular place. Um, and yeah, we've gotten some, some good feedback, so we appreciate hearing that, and um, we're having a good time being able to share that with you all. Um, okay, so we have a couple more. So number 10, Kellen says, when one snail becomes two, does that happen? Um, so here's number 10, when one snail becomes two, that's, that's interesting. That's really nice. Um, yeah, I don't know if that actually happens in real life. I want to know. Um, but I think what that means, whether it's a real thing or not, I feel like you're very hopeful about, um, Or, well, yeah, aware and hopeful um, about what it means to sort of have like a multidimensional personality and um, like a multidimensional understanding of the world and your surroundings. Um, you know that things aren't just kind of like one or the other. You realize that one thing could actually be to separate items, um, but still be that like one essential being. Um, and um, yeah, the fact that you're, it's sort of like when one snail becomes two, it means that you're like really focusing in on that one moment when it's happening, um, which I think also means that you pay attention 
to um, all the little details in life. Um, oh, and there's all these nice comments about responding to what I was saying. Yeah, this it's been it's been nice. We still have we still have another what what twenty minutes. Just savor it, suck it all in. You can always go back and watch too. And like I said earlier, if you you know if you like crafting with me and you want to keep crafting, like I'm not gonna stop crafting. Like who are we kidding? I will be crafting. <laughs> I just won't be doing it on Tuesday nights for two hours every week. Um, but we can still, like, we can still engage with the crafts. Um, okay, so I'm going to make two more. Let's get on it. I'm going to make a four-color one. I'm very excited about that. Oh, I just realized I, I'm doing this one. I've done all the others. I put the ink on the left side, and this one I'm putting on the right side. What does that say about me? <laughs> I don't think I can analyze myself. Like, in general, but, or, well, no, I guess in general I can, but, um, but right now I don't think that's, I don't think that's appropriate to be analyzing myself. If anyone has some insight into what it means that I've been putting them all on one side and now I've moved to the other, feel free to let me know. All right. Let's press this puppy. So, number 11. Oh. Our first four color. There we are. Put it a little closer so y'all can see it. Give you a minute here. Think about it. And while you're thinking about that, I'm going to make number 12. Unless I see, um, unless I see what you see. In the meantime, then I'll, then I'll stop and tell you what it means. And this is the, this is number 11 here. Um, maybe another four color too. Oh, uh, you've, a reading for me. I think it means you adapt well to different things moving to left side. Oh, thank you. That's nice. What's in here? Um, this one is a pressed puppy. <laughs> um, I'm just holding it like this, right? Is that how I was holding it before? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, a pressed puppy, that sounds, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, but I'm thinking about like, 
Mike and I have been doing a lot of yoga, and there's a pose called a puppy pose, which is, like, really um, sort of, like, loosens up your shoulders and, like, stretches out, like, the most tense parts of my body. So maybe um, if it, if I can sort of place my own feelings on what you said, um, maybe seeing a pressed puppy in this is, like, like, the puppy is this, like, new creature that um, is, like, fresh, <laughs> fresh to life and, like, has a bunch of, like, wonderful, has, like, a great future ahead of it, right? Um, and I like that that picture is really silly. That puppy doesn't look so happy, though. Um, um, and then, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, like, stretching out and it's, looking forward to all it has ahead of it um and just like the idea of a puppy in general is is pretty like fun and energetic um that puppy that we're seeing in the in the other picture um that one is just like taking a break that one's just like it knows it's time to sort of put its head against the wall and it needs it just needs some time to like chill out um so yeah, so either whichever version of the pressed puppy we're talking about, um, it's one or the other. It's either like taking some time to chill out or it's like open to new possibilities. Um, okay, and so then we have also, um, looks like a man with beard lifting weights and cheering upside down. Wow, okay, so that's a very detailed one. So um, your brain is now firing whatever, something about this, um, all these shapes is making your brain like feel very inspired and very creative um, to see so many details within this. Um, it's a man with a beard lifting weights. So he's strong. Um, he is exercising, um, so you're probably feeling like you're, um, you're, you must be aware of your own strength, whether that's, you know, physically or emotionally, um, and he's lifting weights and cheering, um, which that, that would be difficult to do both at once, I would think, while upside down. Um, but I think that's, that actually, yeah, so he's like, he's cheering, so he's happy, he's proud, he's excited, um, so I think you're, you're, um, excited about, uh, sort of being aware of your own strength. looks like a man with beard lifting weights and cheering upside down, not afterwards. That's what, it was a correction in there. I'm just explaining to Mike that we're having a side conversation here. <laughs> um, nice. Oh, it, it's changed a little bit. Ooh, I used uh, two different types of paint and the one of them is still liquidy. So I'm going to finish number 12. If anyone has anything else to say about number 11, I'll be happy to talk about it with you. Oh, it is like you saw it the other way. Um, well, I guess if you saw it upside down or if I had it upside down, then it was upside down. Okay, so now, okay. Well, I'm still going to give you the same... Same reading, um, he's still cheering, excited about his strength. Um, yeah, there's definitely some like awareness of strength and excitement about that and something that you should feel proud of. Um, but now so everyone can see, this is the correct way <laughs> um, to see that man lifting weights with a beard upside down. Or I mean, not upside down, cheering. I'm getting myself all twisted. Okay, very good. Back to number 
some of these pink tubes are getting hard to open. All right, I'm going to roll this final one. It's fun to um, like not know what you're going to see, especially with this roll. I feel like the roller really like spreads the paint a little bit. I don't know if I just pressed it, it would probably spread in a different way. Um, all right. So this one is number 12. And it's our final card of the evening. So I'll keep it here for you all to see it for a minute or so. Um, and then maybe I'll just do a quick run through, you know, just to close the night. You can let me know what you see on number 12. I'll give some final readings. Okay, so that's, that's the final one. I'm going to go backwards through just so you can see them all. That one was number 11. This one was number 10. Sophia says, whoa, holy moly. <laughs> um, it's cool when they like open up, I think is, is the reaction. I agree. Um, this is number nine. No, is it? Is this not? No, well, I think it was actually, this was number nine. Whoops, so sorry. Yeah, this one's number nine. This was eight. I think this was seven. I might have done these out of, out of order, but it's fine. Just shell them all. I think this was actually number six. Some of the bright colors are hard to show. Number eight is your favorite. That one's, yeah, that's pretty. Um, it's interesting, like, I mean, it's been fun to focus on, like, what are we seeing and do the readings, but this is also just, like, a nice way to make pretty things. And, like, kind of similar to the, some of the other stuff I've done on here, the marbling and the blind contour, just like letting go a little bit, like letting go, you can't really control it. So like, it's kind of a fun exercise um, for that in like, in both like an, you know, an artistic way, but also just like in general, it's nice to just like do something and see what happens. Um, okay, so we have a, Thing written in. Um, number 12, little boy sitting in a garden. Okay, so um, you're seeing a person sitting in a garden, which is a calm activity. Um, so you're feeling a little peaceful. The fact that it's a little boy um, is like, you know, a child um, seeing a young, playful person sitting in a garden being very peaceful. Um, that might be mean that you're thinking about like feeling youthful 
um, thinking about um, thinking about like maybe um, nice times that you've had throughout your life where you felt like worry free um, and yeah, having access to nature and, and peace. Um, that's what I have to say about that. And then also 12 looks like Nikki Lane to me. Mike, who's Nikki Lane? Oh, you don't know either? Sophie, who's Nikki Lane? <laughs> Mike's going to find a picture, I think. I'm assuming it's a who. I guess Nikki Lane could also be like a street. coming once I once I have a little more information then I can give you a reading um, anything I would say now would be just ill-informed um, she's a musician okay there she is okay so um I don't really know I wish I knew her music if I knew her music maybe I could give you like a more detailed reading, but um, I can see your picture. Um, I would say because you're seeing, well, you're seeing, um, you're seeing a musician who must be, you know, well known to some degree. Just because I don't know her doesn't mean that I'm. I'm assuming she's someone that other people know besides you, Sophie. Um, so it means that you're maybe it's someone that you look up to, maybe it's someone that um, inspires you. You're um, you're thinking about the people that maybe are a little more like in the spotlight these days, and um, and musicians always have this like allure to them. They're these people that possess some sort of special skill and um, put themselves out there with it. It's a really vulnerable place to be. They're very strong people. So um, yeah, I think the fact that you're seeing this um, female musician means that you're um, maybe in touch with your like vulnerable side and in touch with your, but within that like being creative and um, finding positive outlets. Um, and also maybe listening to a lot of music right now and, and finding connections with other people through that. And um, I think that might be my last reading of the evening. And our, our final activity for craft work. Um, that was really fun. I enjoyed making these. Thank you all for coming along on the ride. Um, I hope you all enjoyed what I had to say about, uh, you know, what you were seeing and what that meant about you. Um, from your responses, it seemed like it was positive, so that's good. Um, yeah, and I thank you all for being here. Like I said, Mike and I will be, um, still making some videos, still doing stuff. We're going to start our podcast and, um, yeah, please be in touch. And if you haven't already, Ooh, we just got it. What? Oh, you did it. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you haven't already and you want to see our other videos, you can subscribe. Um, if you do it now quick before we go, we'll make that fun noise again. And you'll see a little zombie monster. Um, <laughs> Um, if you do it afterwards, that's fine too, but then you can stay up to date with what we're doing. Apparently there's a little notification bell you can click on, which will send you emails so that you get updates. Um, and yeah, tune in and, um, thanks for being here. Miss you all as well, but I'm really, it really feels like you're here with me. It's really nice to do this. Um, and, uh, we'll connect in some other way soon. Thank you and good night.